you. He is the peacemaker. I said yesterday, a little girl asked me, will you pray for me that I could have peace? I want peace. Oh, God makes peace. God makes peace when sin is destroyed in your life. God makes peace when sin is destroyed in your life. Uh, if you have no peace, it's because you rebel against God. It's because you resist God and you won't come to him that you may have life and have an abundant life. Oh, he is the abundant life giver. Well, we have experienced this life. Every day we walk in the life of the living God. Every day we have been given this gift of eternal life. You understand? I haven't earned it. Praise him. I am not better than you. I am beneath you. Really. I am beneath you. I come to you. I come to you with the menace, with the word of peace. Oh, make peace with God, Muslim. Make peace with God, Muslim. Make peace with God, Muslim. Bow the knee. Bow the knee to the sun, Muslim. Bow the knee. You have no peace. You have no love. If you love God, you'll love your brother. You don't love me. I love you. I tell you the truth. I, I present to you. I present to you the living Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who came into the world to save you from sin. Oh, you understand, Muslim, that condemnation abides upon you. You understand, Roman Catholic, that the condemnation, that is the justice, the wrath of God, abides upon you because you are constructed for eternal life. He is the peacemaker, Jesus. He is the peace giver, Jesus. He is the one that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit testifies of. The Spirit testifies of Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God. And the Spirit who dwells within us testifies to you that Jesus is the Son of God, O oh Muslim. Don't die without Christ. O oh Muslim, you die without Christ. Hellfire awaits you. And we are here to give you the gift of life. It's available for all. There's no partiality with God. No, God loves you. God made down his life for you. God is revealing his mercy to you like he did to me this morning. His mercies are new every morning, and you are enjoying them, and I am enjoying them. The only difference between you and me is I'm giving thanks for it, and I want you to come with a thankful heart, saying, God, you are the one. I love you. I praise you. I thank you, and I want to walk with you today, filled with you, and enjoy you. And so, that kind of life, that kind of life, eternal life, is that, that comes within. Eternity is in your heart. I want you to know that if you died right now and fell over, you would have the assurance of walking before Jesus Christ and being received into the kingdom of God. That God would, would have open arms to, that you could be received, that you can walk into paradise, that you can experience the blessing of God, that your sins have been blotted out, you have a clean conscience, that the pain and the wounds, the scars, the insecurity, and the emptiness of your life, God would heal. God would hug you and love you and restore you and, and redeem you and forgive you. I mean, this is the good news. This is the good news. You have to experience it. This is the good news. That's why we're here. We're not here to give you bad news. We're here to give you good news. And the good news is you don't have to remain in your sin. You don't have to remain in your misery. You don't have to remain with your stress. You don't have to remain in your anxiety. You don't have to remain in that place of destruction. That sin. The sin will destroy you. Yes. Yes, your selfishness. Sin is selfishness. Sin is when you're self-centered and you're self-seeking and you're self-absorbed and self-contained and you're self-sufficient. Everything deals with yourself. Because God is God. He's the only God. All right, what should I draw? I'm going to die for your sin. Jesus died for your sin. Paul's not going to die for your sin. Jesus died for your sin. He's the only one on earth that did that because he loves you. Don't you understand? We want you to be in heaven. We want you to feel love. What about Jesus? Why forever? Why would we be out here if we didn't love you? 
Why would we be out here if we didn't love you? I could be at home with my wife, 1,800 miles away. I feel bad for her. Why would you tell her you're fucking someone else right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, you listen to support rap music, which supports abusing women. No, it doesn't. How does it not? You just want to have sex with them and use them. I don't want to have sex with them like that. How do you know? Sister, I got you back. You got a good shot with the camera? That means you can stand up here. Come on, stand up here. I got you.
I just, you had a question for your dad. Right right you don't have to. I'm not leaving you. You have to speak. No, I said, uh, you guys, you're not going to be doing this. You got to. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
you sin against God, and you sin against the people of God, He is the only way. He is the only way. Muhammad is not the only way. He is not the way. For God says this, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know what? I am, I am the richest man on earth because I have grace. When you have God's grace, you, you possess eternal life through Jesus. But when you're a sinner, you're bankrupt. And, and the Bible says that you're going to have all these desires and they're going to eat you up. They're go, the Bible says they're going to eat up your flesh like fire, the Bible says. They're going to eat you up and burn you up from within. You know what's going to happen to you guys if you don't repent? You're going to you're going to self-destruct. The Bible says Bible says that 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 you're an empty vessel. And and I don't want that for you. God God does not want you to be an adult an adulteress, a fornicator, and all these things that college kids are. What's your question, man? Your first step is to, to confess. You have to confess, number one, that you are not right with God. You know, there's a lot of people out here that think they're right with God. Okay, so if you're willing to say, look, uh, I, I admit that I am a hell-bound sinner. I, 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 I fear God. I don't want to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. God does want you to be your friend. But the Bible says, that Jesus said in John 15, verse uh, 15, he said, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So Jesus wants to make you his friend when you say, okay, God, I, you know, Jesus is not, a, is not just going to be your friend if you're going to be a sinner because the devil and Jesus, they're, they're not friends, they're enemies. So God wants to change you from your state, following the devil, being under the devil's kingdom, the devil's rulership, the devil's leadership, to now you're under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. You're a new creation, a new man. You've been changed. You have a new pattern, a new life. Everything is new. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old, old things pass away and all things become new. Your old life has to die with Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, If we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Paul said in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, he said, That I may know him and the fellowship and, and, and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of the sufferings. It says that, that, that I might by some means attain to the resurrection from the dead.